Hello everyone and welcome to the Melio Movement Podcast. This is a podcast that brings reality, it brings real stories and it brings real people into the limelight of you watching this. I want to spread awareness that us normal people do go on these journeys and come out the other end succeeding in life. Every single guest that I have on this show has been through something in life and now is doing absolutely truly incredible things. I want to share their journey and exactly how they get there. Big love, and as always, Melly a fucking movement, baby. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> welcome. Thank you for having me, mate. It's, good. It. it's good to see you, bro. Bro, it's been, how long did we say it's been? Like, yeah, hot minute, hot, hot minute. Too long, too long. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming down. I really appreciate it. No, thanks, man. Um, I, know, I know this episode is going to be, it's going to be eye-opening for me. <clears throat> I've known you for what ten years. Yeah, man. About yeah. ten just, years. Just over. In just fact. over. Yeah. And normally with pals that I've known, yeah, like I find they open up to me a fair bit. But you, you're known for keeping your cards <laughs> close to your chest. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, you I'm can in, that. I'm intrigued. You are <clears throat> from face from when I first met you. Are one of the most loyal people. I'll ever come across. I'll never forget it. I was walking past the bell in Napa and I'd been off the rails, hadn't been back to the villa for a while <laughs> and you just stopped and you were like, you know, we're always here for you and that. Yeah, so yeah. you are, everyone would probably say there's not a bad word to say about you. Well, it's always nicer here. I'd, I'd um, like to think so. <laughs> you're, a, you're, you're a special soul, man. I've only ever seen you one way and that's it. No, I appreciate Inspiring. That. You've always been a grafter. Even even in summers and night in Napa, you'd yeah. be working while I'd be <laughs> face down in that car or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um, I'm excited to get into this and um, yeah man just show the world how great you are as a person because this is what I want to use the platform for and I know you've been through an absolute madness so um, let's get started so all my guests I tell them like, I want to know who little Dan is yeah man and the journey you've gone through to the Dan that's sitting here today <laughs> wow well, there's a lot of nervous energy because <clears throat> I was I, I did think about doing this and what I would say and like I said I keep myself my cards close to my chest and etc cetera, etc cetera. but um, where it started so I'm 31 now this should just turn like about a week ago so uh, 31 years ago born and raised in Peckham South East London um, single parent so mum raised me my dad was on the scene but it was sort of like weekends things that sort of thing um, <clears throat> I was I'd say I was a good kid like wasn't especially in my environment as well, yeah. like obviously in Peckham. I was brought up between like two mad estates, bruv, Acorn Estate and Yellow Brick. <laughs> um, Acorn's gone now, Yellow Brick is still standing. Yeah. Um, like you can, you can just Google news articles and all sorts about the madness that used to go on back there. But like I was never influenced by that sort of lifestyle anyway. So like I was always, like I said, I was a good kid. Um, uh, and with that, um, I said moving forward my mum worked hard bro like worked hard single parent life all I ever known was for her to just work 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 and um, <clears throat> I'd predominantly stay at my nan's um, who was in Peckham as well and she basically taught me a lot of face values um, that's in my grandma um, on either side it's like my nan so it's more of like um, my, my dad's aunt type thing Yeah. and uh, like I said testament raised me put food on the table Monday to Friday after school and things like that. That's what I'd go to. Um, and I said, surrounded by good home family people. Um, and like I said, the, that pays evidence into how I am today with relationships that I have with people and that sort of thing. Um, in school, like I said, I probably said <clears throat> I, I was very shy. I mean, I, f I feel like I'm still shy. Um, I'm probably like the biggest introvert ever. <laughs> it's like, the king, bro. But, like, once you're inside sort of the bubble, I'll be the biggest extrovert. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, I, I will open up to, to people, as you know. Um, but in, if I walk into a crowd of new people, I'll be the quietest one. I just will be. A lot of people may s sometimes, when they first see me, they think, like, oh, he's a bit, like, ooh, a bit standoffish or things like yeah. that. But it's, it's, just, it's just me. It's just my demeanour. I just keep myself to myself. But, uh, and I'm happy. Like, I'm, <laughs> it's never any bad vibes or nothing. Like, it's just, I'm just keep myself for myself. I'm in my own little bubble. And that's that's always been me. Um, I've, um, in terms of, like, my my hobbies and things like that, I was into arts. So, obviously, my career now is obviously art-based, but music-driven, um, anything creative, bro. That was my outlet. So, as, as quiet as I was, 
my outlet was in, in forms of music, yeah. dance, obviously painting, etc. All the, all that sort of stuff. Anything creative was my <coughs> output. And um, like I said I was a good student. Um, I'm very, very, very well educated. Like I said, so I wasn't stupid. I didn't caught up in silly things. Um, what else? I will, I will say though, with with like being aware and and sort of knowing how I was quite young, I was very aware of how other people acted as well. And that's testament to how I moved forward. Um, it has pros and cons, which I look back at and go, in some situations, like I don't empathise or, because I, I go based on logic and understanding and communicating and breaking down as opposed to just going straight off feeling. Yeah. And it actually took me a few years to realise the aspect of feelings and what how people interact and what they feel as opposed to how they should feel in a in a situation like you can't help those sort of things yeah. and it took ages for me to <clears throat> really really digest that sort of information because from my point of view i just saw everything at face value face value it is what it is as simple as that yeah um i'd say like I said, with that notion of being self-aware, um, single, like I mentioned before, single parent, dad in and out, it was, it was a very toxic relationship. Um, and like, I won't touch base too much on it, but like just knowing that there was a lot of arguments, it was used, used as a weapon, so that single parent, like yeah. the child uses a weapon, that sort of thing, and you can't see him certain days and rah, rah, but like <clears throat> constant back and forth. It was all petty stuff, petty stuff, yeah, that... Um, like, in hindsight, I never held against either parent either. Like I, I, like I said, I can have open conversations about that. And like I said, everything's calm now. But back then, it wasn't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It <laughs> really wasn't. And um, it was problematic. And it would be things like, oh, I'll be seeing my dad this weekend and all of a sudden I'm not. And I'm like, oh, why? And, and small things like that. And it, yeah. when you're an only child, like, I'm an only child on my mum's side. I do have siblings on my dad's side. But when it, I'm, like I said, I'm on my own. It's like, I, that's, I'm going to my dad, do football on the weekend, and then I'm not doing it. And it's like, oh. And yeah, it will make you feel a type yeah, of way. 100%. And like people, people will go through that and kids will go through that and not really know how to digest that information. Um, <clears throat> it, when I say pros and cons on how it sort of made me, like I said, I understood the situations and I never played the blame game. You know, I that's just mature of you. Yeah, as well. I just. But from a young age, I always yeah. knew that that's what the situation was for some reason. Like I said, it, that's where I've always just been a bit obscure from the from the normal. Um, but again, taking that taking that on board, it just it just is what it was, and we move forward. Yeah. Um, luckily, like I said, they're in a great position now where they can call up now and things, and that's because of life experiences. And we'll touch base on when we get into that. So, moving forward, um, I think when I say about surroundings as well and trauma and things like that, I never personally had trauma. It was always around me though. Yeah. Like I said, um, in Peckham, the Damiola Taylor story, that sort of thing, all them sort of headlines and um, the stabbings, the, the gangs, the night, like crime constantly. More the environment. Yeah, it was obviously very toxic and it was all about just learning the field to understand how to avoid that basically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like being, being cautious, self-aware, um, and understanding that it can be very easy to get caught up in that lifestyle. Like, do you know what I mean? So like I say, with my upbringing, I'm very grateful for what I had. I never went without and things like that. Um, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't good around me. <clears throat> so with the people that I did have around me, it, it, it was a good structure. It was a safe net. And I'm, I'm, and I'm grateful for that. Um, pushing forward, I'd say... And like I said, everything was sweet. There was problems around in terms of just lifestyle. The only thing that really touched base with me personally was a period when my grandma died uh, on my mum's side. And this was back in 2003 where, like, she was my my everything, like, absolute everything. Uh, she lived up north in Middlesbrough uh, and she had cancer, got the all clear, and then it came back with vengeance and, and took her. It, it affected the family massively, as it would. Um, it was the first sort of relationship I had with cancer because I didn't know of it. I'm only young yeah. at the time. Um, and it didn't do well for my mum either. As uh, And like I said, I spoke to her on the phone and said, like, I'll have to touch base on these sort of things because on what it did to me. 
um, as well as to her, it didn't didn't do things good things to her, and that's partly how things unfolded for her too. Um, she ended up getting with a guy who was an old, an acquaintance of like my dad's era, um, sort of like one side or the other type thing. Yeah, yeah. So that didn't <clears throat> go down well, and he was probably the the first traumatic thing to actually happen in my life where he was abusive, things like that, to my mum. There was a situation where um, he he had anger issues and this is the first time I was obviously seeing like a dominant male figure constantly in my house and it having that sort of influence personally. Um, And I didn't like it, but I didn't know how to address it either. And like I said, I'm only 12 years old. Um, I don't really... Like I said, I'm not. I'm new to this environment, but this woman's booked it. My mum's brought this man into the house, so it's like, do you know what I mean? What really can you say? Um, he wasn't good to her. It it definitely did take a toll on her. Um, there was a situation where, uh, well, there's a few situations. A few situations. Um, I had my door, my finger slammed in a door, like just Fuck. from him just lashing out. Yeah. Uh, snapped my tendon, like, <laughs> like just just dumb <clears throat> things of his reactions, and us leave, like walking out the room. My mom's upstairs. I've left, and he's just in a hissy fit. He just kicked the door, and me just being young, trailing my finger, bang, oh. like yeah, just dumb stuff like yeah. that. Petty, petty things, and he had issues. And I think um, I had to write down as well. Um, there was a situation where we went away on, went away on holiday, and that he it was me, his son, my mum went away to Spain or somewhere cool. And you could just tell the vibe was off. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I said, self aware. Something yeah, yeah. is off in this. this Reading something. energy from yeah. a young age. You could just tell, and to the point where his own son didn't want to be in his company. Like he'd rather be with us and things like that. And. I think when that holiday finished, um, my mum was like, knock it on the head. Like, uh, there, was, there, was, there was problems. Um, he went on, had counselling, things like that. And for a few months, we didn't see him. And then he came, sort of came back on the scene, but it wasn't sort of in, in, in. And then at this point, I think my mum had a good relationship with my dad. So I was around his one day and it was around December and we got a call saying that I can't come home. So I was like, right, okay. Anyway, turns out my mum was put in hospital by this guy. Fuck. Yeah. Um, from that point, obviously, you can imagine, like, what, what, what do you do? Yeah. Like, uh, you went to jail, things like that. So it, it went through the proper procedures and things like that. But obviously what that could do to my mum, the scarring, mental scarring, like, it's definitely affected her relationships moving forward and things like that. And I've had to just witness that and digest it. Not really know how to help though, do you know what yeah. I mean? And like, so, but it's just digested. Just have to take it in, understand the information at hand and keep, keep going forward, really. Yeah, that, um, people, people don't understand that like, when, when now your actions, now I was a dickhead growing up around mm-hmm. girls and that, and I'll fully admit that, but I've ne- never violently done it, but you don't realise the impact your actions have moving yeah. forward. Now it's more <clears> just on that woman when they have kids, yeah, <clears throat> their insecurities are projected onto that kid and it's just a massive domino effect. Exactly. Like like I said, there were situations that we, me and him were put in, in positions where, like I said, like, bro, man would just grips me up. Like, he'd, he'd just lash out and just grips me up, fist in my face, like, to the point, like, just, just and like, being a problem in it. But like, yeah. what do I do? What do I say? I can't do or say anything. Like, And it's one of the things where I can but I don't know how to, because again, I'm still a young lad from Peckham and I'm still going to have this sort of ego about me. But what really, like this is a grown 30 yeah, yeah. plus year old what man fuck all. standing over me like, yo, say anything, yeah. it's going to be a problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've already had my tendon snapped. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? So when that event did actually happen, obviously, that's when life sort of changed and um, we ended up obviously, we had to have a security like a metal security gate on our door. Like, yeah. Um, Fuck. Ended up leaving London. Um, a lot of people don't know that's the real reason why we left London and moved to Kent. Um, when we went to Kent, new school, new lifestyle. Um, I was. I remember being very ignorant as well, just because of the whole lifestyle change. Um, I didn't want to be in Kent. 
I knew that I didn't really want to make new friends. I had my friends and I, obviously I felt like because of the whole situation, it was being taken from me. So when I did go to, go to Kent, I had a chip on my shoulder. But I, was, I, was, I still behaved, but I, I just had an, a social chip, chip on my shoulder, um, which, again, looking back in hindsight, obviously it's childish, yeah. but it, I learned a lot. I did learn a lot about, again, people, new, meeting new people as well. Um, readjusting that sort of thing and like I say Kent life was calm um, there were sort of situations of ignorance in clubs and blah 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 but that's just life you learn yeah. like again when you go to somewhere new people are accustomed to certain things and that's just their normal isn't it it's just yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like anywhere up. you go in life um, again all that information I take on board I just take it on board and just roll with it um, and then when I was uh, that obviously that's from like 15 to 20 and then on, uh, I remember my mum going, when I was about 19, they said, I think I'm going to leave the country. So I was like, what? She goes, yeah, yeah. She's been back and forth to Cyprus quite a bit. And uh, she's like, I think I'm going to move her out there. So what are you going to do? So I was like, <laughs> bloody hell, mum. I'm still doing my A-levels. Like, I was doing art, photography, graphics. I think music at the time, but I ended up dropping out. And um, I was like, well, I'm obviously going to stay in England. All my friends, like, my friends are here, et cetera. This is the base, and she was like, "Okay, cool." Time went on. I remember going on a lads' holiday, Magaluf, fun, fun, fun. Got back, and then she was going to Iron Upper, literally <laughs> like three days later. She was like, "Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Yeah, go on then." I was in that holiday yeah, yeah, mood. Yeah. Went out there as soon as I was out there. Just loved it. Yeah, loved it. Like, and I think that's key as well because obviously I remembered how good that little stint was. I was looking at villas and things like that, but I just loved being out there. Yeah. Got back. Told everyone I'm leaving. Call, come the March, left the day after my birthday, March the 7th. And I felt like I regretted it. It was the biggest mistake. Really? Yeah. I was just like, what have I done? Like, Instant, up. instantly. Yeah. yeah, I was like, <clears throat> I remember the, the, the idea of when I left London and going to Kent, it, it hit me again. And I was like, Sh like shit, man. Like, why, why have I done this again? But this time, I've actually made that choice. Like, yeah. I've actually jumped. And, um, in doing so, like, I went into a massive shell of myself, like, s socially, like, mentally, like, because I just felt so alone out there. Obviously, I've gone out there. I, I don't know anyone. No. We've got no friends, no associates, nothing. I don't have a job, no money coming in. Like, I didn't even have our, we didn't even have our stuff. So, obviously, our stuff came, like, three weeks later. Yeah, yeah. So, I was like... Oh, I've just made the biggest mistake of my life. Like, what well, they had a job back in England. It was only Toys R Us, but like, it yeah. was income. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, friends and Yeah, that's it. And I was content with that. Very content with that. But when I um, went out there, I remember there was problems between my mum's boyfriend at the time and basically our household where she was the only one working. Um, he would have a job on the side part-time. The guy was a, would go off and come back and get him for work type thing. Um, but then that sort of household structure broke down again. And then I would, you'd probably say like, like the PTSD kicked in where I'm getting this male figure becoming a problem again in the household. And this time I'm old enough to speak up yeah. and, and say something. Um, and I just need to divert quickly where now my mum's working I've been given the opportunity of an, an apprenticeship tattooing which is what my career is now um, didn't really know anything about it but I was going off to the studio up to 10 hours a day just being basically a shop bitch like <laughs> doing the apprenticeship properly and I'd come home and the conversation would be what have you done uh, as in the guy very little around the house it's like well Dan's not bringing in any money and like these would be the arguments and he'd be like hang on a sec like I'm, I'm going out and I'm, I'm doing an apprenticeship bro like I'm actually trying like I'm doing something that's probably going to go somewhere yeah. you're doing nothing <laughs> like how, how can you weigh up the two options you can't like, even justify yeah, that it's, it's just nonsense and like I'd get pissed off I'd get, I'd get pissed off and like I said that notion of this this geezer coming in and like he wasn't just a geezer, but like that's how it felt. Like yeah. it felt personal, <clears throat> where like you're taking the piss. Like I'm gonna get, I'm getting triggered. Yeah. And lo and behold, there was a bust up. There was um, ended up scrapping out and <laughs> some nonsense. But 
from that point, again, my mum was like, nah, like this, you're done, finished, get him out, sent him back to England, all the rest of it. Yeah. And then, we, but it basically has sort of a, like a sort of calm, calm set into life. Um, but again, I was still a shell of myself. And I think that's where it now goes into like the main part of what I wanted to talk about today and what probably affects other people where, again, that see that first year, 2011, um, I get uh, Iron Apples around me and we're into like May, June and I still haven't been out like I've not been out yeah. like I, I haven't I've completely forgotten where I am like in this location which is crazy thinking it's only going to be <clears throat> knowing that only a couple months later I'm going to be working on this strip and things like that but I literally could forgot completely forgot completely forgot that that's what was every single night people were having their, the time of their lives I was sat at home playing like Call of Duty on some dead Wi-Fi <laughs> like thinking yeah I've still made the biggest mistake like I'm going to work tattooing the environment of tattooing at the time wasn't me remember I'm a city kid yeah I'm working and, and, th- and I always give thanks to the, to, to the, to the, the three Anna Bart and Martin where <laughs> three Polish people where they just took me on board and was like, listen, if he's got something, we'll try it. But like their world was very different. Yeah. Uh, it was very, very dark, <laughs> gothic. Like you'd walk in and it'd just be like, blah, 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 like just, <laughs> just the heaviest. And I'd be like, Jesus, what, 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 have, what have I done? So you can imagine like my mentor was just like, <laughs> oh, I've just made, I've, I've made the biggest mistake. I've, I've definitely made the biggest mistake. No right? positives. Yeah, no, the, bro, there was no positive out of it. And it's like I was just manifesting this bad energy constantly, yeah, constantly. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, almost got bombed. Yeah, so like, <laughs> if I think like that whole year, things just felt like it went from bad to worse because I was manifesting this bad energy. Yeah. So I remember studio were closed early one time, waiting outside the front of the shop. And those that know Iron Apple, you know Dr. Savas. And yeah, the yeah. studio used to, used to be next to that. And my mum used to work in one of the hotels and she was doing a treatment um, before she was going to pick me up and take me home. So I was like, listen, I'll come round and I'll just meet you at the hotel. As I'm walking round, I heard like what sounded like a giant firework. Yeah, just a huge firework. Didn't think nothing of it. Carried on walking. Got to the hotel, waiting around. My mum gets a phone call and she's like, on the phone, like, like sort of head, like hysteric, like not hysterical, but like alerting down the phone. So my mum's like, he's here, he's here, he's here, what are you talking about? Turns out it's Anna's called my mum, the owner of the shop, and she's like, the tattoo shop's been bombed, right? So I'm like, excuse me? She's like, the, the shop's just been bombed, bruv. Like, I'm talking, I've just left the shop. Like two minutes. Literally within <clears throat> like four minutes, bro. Yeah, I remember I've heard the back, yeah, 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 but yeah. not thought anything of it. And it just sounded like a loud, loud firework at distance. So you heard it echo throughout the sky, yeah, yeah. The, the, the sky and that. And I was like, what do you mean it's been bombed? So bro, grabbed my bag and I ran, ran back to the, back to the studio. Bro, <laughs> glass everywhere, bro. The whole, like the, basically the, there was a betting shop next to it that had all been blown through. No way. Um, yeah, and it was like a targeted attack, targeted attack. Um, as you know, the, the, his, the history of what's out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. In Napa and that. Was and anyone in the shop? Or so luckily no one was in the shop. Fuck. The shop was closed. Um, I, thankfully, I don't think anyone was hurt in the betting shop either, but it was just mad, bro. Like I was sat outside the bench and I was going to wait there until she came. And then I called her up and was like, oh, how long are you going to be? She's like, I'm next time. And me just leaving, boom. And then all of a sudden, bang. Like if I'd have been there, Bro. Like I don't know what ha- what that would have done. <laughs> like, yeah. What that was some one, final destination. One, thing. one minute you're literally just sat in your bedroom, fucking exactly. playing Call of Duty. Yeah. None of the whites. So you've, you couldn't have gone from you've gone from a quiet bubble <laughs> yeah. to a fucking bomb in your tattoo Bro, shop. Literally, it was, it, was, it, was, it was it was the maddest. It was a, it was the most surreal thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where like final destination, like <laughs> through and through. Like I thought, like I said, because I was manifesting this sort of <laughs> negative energy. That's what came, and I was like. What the hell? And then moving forward, probably about, probably like, in fact, it was the night of the David Hay fight. So I think it was like July the 2nd, 2011. Um, and David Hay was fighting. Again, I wasn't living in Napa, but I remember a guy, the guy who was the other apprentice, he was like, do you want to we'll go out in Napa? 
get you out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, go on then. I'll stay around his. Finished work early and uh, went to the apartment, dropped the bags off. Next thing you know, there's a knock at the door. So I'm like, oh, uh, I just had Scott. Your door's gone. So he's gone to the door, boom. Opened it. Well, there's 12 narcs at the door. 12 narcotic police. So like, we're looking at each other like, what's going on here then? Right, goes, we've got a warrant to search the gaff. So he's like, right. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, he's with a roommate. They were there with a roommate who was leaving, basically. And um, he basically gave him the look like, yeah, you can just, like, search the gaff, there's, there's nothing here. So he's like, yeah, cool. Obviously, I don't have anything. He hasn't got anything. Yeah, yeah. The guy's <clears> sort of giving him the look like nothing's here anyway. Long story short, they start raiding everything, bro. Like, searching everything, tearing everything up, like, turning the gaff upside down. And I'm, like, just sat on this sofa, bro. Because remember, I'm a, I'm a hermit, bro. I'm yeah, sure, like, yeah. So I, I'm just sat there, like, okay, like... Because <laughs> obviously, I'm not involved. No. Next thing you know, you just hear all this screaming, hello, hey, da, da, da. So everyone's, like, sort of looking. They found this little tub out on the windowsill. And the guy who it belonged to was having a cigarette on the balcony. And I remember turning left and seeing his legs just fall back <laughs> off the balcony, bro. And he's just, Fuck. just basically jumped off. Bear screaming, shouting, da, 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 da. going mad. Where is he? Where is he? They all run out. Come up to me. Where's he gone with? Like, bro, you got eyes? I don't know. Like, <laughs> you, let him, you let him go, innit? Like, what's going So Scott's like, what's going I said, bro, your boy's gone. Like, mad thing. Next thing you know, I'm in cuffs. <laughs> Scott's in cuffs. And bro, we're being escorted out. Like, you're under arrest. I'm like, for what? I haven't done anything. Yeah, God, yeah. So we're now getting done for this. I feel like, yo, I need to call my mum. Boom, phone slapped out of my hand. Like... Where's this guy? We're patrolling in his car now, in the back, cuffed up, looking for this guy who's obviously just gone able. Um, like, mad. I'm thinking, two weeks ago, I almost got bombed. Yeah. I'm now about to go to jail for some shit that I haven't done. Like, why is all this bad shit happening to You've me? You've got more chance <laughs> of being in your little room as a permit bro, watching this on Netflix, bro. This is why I was like, yeah, bro, this is yeah. why I don't leave my yard. Like, <laughs> Like, Point proven. man was just manifesting all this bad energy and it was just coming one tenfold, thing after. Yeah. And Especially I was like, in, in a place like that as well, bro. like, it co- it's like one thing, then it's another, yeah. then it's another. It's and like it, non-stop. It you can't like, get away from it. It felt it's like such it was a, getting worse. It's such a toxic environment, purely because why people go there. But yeah. when you, obviously, <clears throat> so I was there five years with you and the boys and it's like, Every every other day there's something. I mean, yeah. like you'd see me and Ben, and there's just we'd go out, and there's just we'd something. come back, and there's waffle. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's it's one of those things where it's its own little world. Yeah, like definitely its own little world. I, I, listen, I give it its flowers because you learn so much while you're out there. It is one of the biggest testaments where people they grow up, they don't know what to do, they either go to uni or yeah. they just go straight into work, or, or they, they run go, away. Exactly, or they run away, and like you get so much life experience. But I'm just saying, do it. But like you do gain a lot of life experience. So like, bearing in mind that my mental was like, I've made the biggest mistake about manifesting this bad energy. I've had a fight with my mum's ex-boyfriend. I've almost been bombed. I'm in a job that I'm not really comfortable in. I've now just been arrested, bruv. Like, what just happened? Six months ago, life was good. Now, what? I'm behind bars. Like, yeah. what the hell? Like, <laughs> what is going on, bro? I did nine days in that jail. No way. Yeah, and I'm Fuck. thinking, what the hell, man? Like, didn't know when I was going to get out. Honestly, didn't know. The guy gave himself up the next day, said, like, we had nothing to do with it, and they still kept us. Like Nine was, days yeah, in so jail. Like, it was one of them things that I remember. In separate jail. In a separate, yeah. Like, and it was just one of them things where, bro, like, I really started to question my being. Mm. Like, what was the point anymore? Like, yeah. What was really the point? Because no matter what I was trying to do, it just wasn't working. It's not happening. Yeah, it, just, it was just a cycle of, okay, you might, something might go well and then you get knocked back, but the knockback was, was tough. Yeah. And it was like, how do I bounce back? Do I stay stuck in that mindset of, and pr- probably prior to that I was, and probably why it did keep happening, so I was manifesting that bad, bad, bad energy. But... 
moving forward, I had to I had to really start just like not being scared anymore, sort of coming out my comfort zone. Um, what way to come out your comfort well, zone? Well, like, this is how mad it was. So like when I, obviously I was living in Leopetri, the, the little village. I moved into Napa and I moved into that apartment I got arrested in. Yeah, and my mum was like, you're mad, don't do it. And I was like, something's telling me I need to do it because yeah. I'm too... Closed off. Yeah, like I need to just step out of this bubble because what I think's working for me in this bubble clearly isn't. It's just one bad thing after another, after another, after another. Like, and it's getting to a point where I'm, I'm tired. Like I'm tired of it, absolutely tired of it probably ended up having one of the best summers ever because it, it was it was such an eye-opener as soon as I did that it just felt like shackles had just been lifted yeah yeah, yeah. I had amazing people I, mean, I think I, I believe seeing you for the first time back in 2011 <laughs> um, you and the boys and that but um worked a gaff called Starsky's those that know of, of like what, yeah. what that gaff was um <laughs> shout out to Ben Curtis and all, all them lot yes but, Ben um, give you, we give you a shout out we do love you brother that's it man broski for life that's but, it man um, I think getting that job and like having that perspective really coming out my comfort zone really changed my mindset like I said had one of the best summers because it was refreshing yeah um I felt a real sense of independence because you went with your gut bro and what your heart was telling you to well, do that's it like like I said I was I, I, it, it, something had to change something had to change and then like I said moving forward everything was great 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 and then basically what I'm here to talk about is obviously the, the main point of awareness and things like that. So as as great, as, as as rocky as that year was, and then the light at the t end of the tunnel was, I had a fantastic summer, met some like, amazing people that have great relationships to this day, yourself being, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we sat here 11 years later <laughs> across the table, do you know what I mean? So you know, but, it's a real one. Exactly. But um, I remember I went out and it was Halloween. Another crazy, crazy night. Woke up the next day and I just had back pain, bro. Like, it was weird. It was like a dull ache that I just can't really describe. Like, and I, I, I thought it was like positioning or throughout the summer, like you, you drink a lot, you just get like an ache in your kidneys just from like the rubbish alcohol and that sort of thing. And that's what I thought it was. The, the, the Halloween was a big session. We was drinking loads. It's all cheap stuff. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. So I just thought my body's cleansing it out. A couple of days went on. And um, again, still having this dull ache in the in, in the kidney area. Couldn't really explain it. Sometimes it would be there, sometimes it wouldn't. So I didn't think anything too much of it. Um, and obviously I was into my tattooing career and the end of the season, the guys had gone back to Poland. So I said I was going to fly to Poland. Um, I'm going to stop off in England first, see some old friends, that sort of thing, catch up with everyone because they ain't seen me all, all year. And... Um, Ended up staying at my mate's, um, shout out Gary and his mum, because if, if it's not for them, I probably wouldn't be here. Like, they, um, I mentioned about my back pain and his mum would be on my case, like, constantly, like, yo, you should see your GP because you may still obviously be registered from the beginning of the year, that's thing. Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't help, it wouldn't hurt to, to, to look. So I was like, mm, yeah. and I think the most important thing to take from this as well is that mentality that I had then where a lot of people will probably just be like, it's uh, nothing. Okay, yeah. I'm fine. Like I can, I can still move. It will just sort itself out type of thing. And I th think that mentality is way too common and isn't acceptable in society. Like I think it needs to be addressed more. It's a way of fear though, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a, um, that, that just, I've had it before. Like my mum's like, go doctors. And I'm like, nah, be away. Right. It's fear of getting a bad answer. That's it. That's, that's for me that's straight value yeah. I won't go anywhere or I won't do certain things because it's fear of getting a bad answer and yeah. I have to trade my way out of that like, no I'll face it head on yeah Ex well exactly so like I was I was like, I ne like I'd never been ill either prior to this so like I never had any child illnesses never had chicken pox or all them sort of things the biggest thing to happen was my tendon being snapped in the door like so I was always fine always fine that was my, men that was my mentality I was always fine that's nah, fine 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 one day I woke up and like, it was bad. Yeah. Like the pain was just excessive now. So she was like, you better get down there now. Or I was like, drag it down there. <laughs> Shout out Janie, Janie girl. But um, went down there, spoke to the GP and I was like, listen, I've got this pain. Can't really explain it. It, it, it doesn't hurt, but it's like a dull ache. Yeah. Um, and they were like, right, feel around. Nothing feels abnormal or anything. Could be kidney stones. Um, 
we'll have to book in an ultrasound. Um, and I said, listen, I can't because I'm leaving the country at the end of the week. I'm going off to Poland. Um, so she said, well, if you can have one out there, just privately or something, I'd recommend it. Again, in my head, I'm not doing it because yeah. ugh, it's long. All right, okay. I've got other things <clears throat> to deal with, blah, blah, blah. I'm 20 years old. I don't know who I think I am or why I think that's acceptable, but that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, it was just, uh, it, get on with it. It's not, it's not that deep. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it was <laughs> because I get to Poland and it's getting severely worse now, severely worse. Um, I speak to Anna, I'm like, listen, there's a serious problem. I've got to have like an ultrasound, you know, where I can go. We ended up going to this private clinic, having some blood tests done, having the ultrasound and um, next day, phone call, red alert. And they're like, what's up? So we don't know, but like his blood levels are like through the roof. So obviously everything's in Polish. So I ain't really got a clue what's being said. And it doesn't really understand the terminologies, um, but they're like, did the ultrasound and they found a cluster of something within my, my, my abdomen. So I'm like, God, right. Now I've got to backtrack a bit to where I said about my grandma and my first yeah. interaction with <clears throat> cancer. Again, I'd never been ill, but I always said as a kid, which is very strange, I would get cancer. Now, because I saw, cause I'd never had anything and I saw what it did to her, I told myself, oh, I'd probably get that. Just, it'd just be my luck. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I, w I would say that quite religiously. Like, I, think, I think most people probably would as well, well be like, oh, no, my luck it's fucking probably happened to me. Yeah, like, and, and, but to the point where, like, it wasn't an obsession, but, like, I'd be too comfortable be saying yeah, it. Yeah, believed it. Yeah, like, yeah. too comfortable saying it. Like, yes, no, my luck, that's what would happen. Mm. Like, and truth be told, it's manifested. Manifested it, right? <laughs> Could have said you're so, going to be a millionaire, bro. Yeah, I don't you know, so Listen, listen. If I go back and tell myself, I definitely would. Like, bro, change that narrative. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so doing the tests, etc. They did the scans, found a cluster of something. And it's one of five things, yeah. And obviously on that list is cancer. Yeah. So instantly I've already told myself, I've got it. Like, I don't really care what anything else is. Whatever you say is either, I already know I've got it. There was complications where um, I had to fly back to Cyprus because I didn't fly back to England. So I had all my treatment done in Cyprus. Um, and I think that was good as well because cause I didn't, at the time I didn't know what it was. Um, when, when you go through something like cancer, um, it, it does things to you, but more importantly, it does things to other people. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think people take that into consideration as much either where the effect that it can have and like I said I saw it with my mum with her mum so like I said I've already taken that information on board mm. and seen what she went through and now she's about to go through it again with her son so I knew I had to conduct myself in a certain manner for her now it's different for everyone back home because I'm away. I'm isolated. I'm on an island. Um, everyone from the summer's gone. So again, it's just me and her. Yeah. Um, and I remember we literally the, the day I land. So it was on a Friday. I had the scans. Saturday, and I flew to Prague because that's where we were meant to go next. I stayed in Poland for one more day. Flew back su uh, Sunday, and I I never forget uh, Drake had just dropped the Take Care album. Yeah, and I had my little BlackBerry, and it's the only album that I had on the BlackBerry. <laughs> And I remember sitting in the airport, bro, like just alone with my thoughts, thinking, <laughs> Drake on repeat. It's probably the worst thing to listen to, bro. <laughs> like, stuff this is guy Del, bro. has got me in my feels right now, yeah. And like, I'm just playing these, going through this album, thinking this is a masterpiece. And did it like, again, I'm lost in the world. I'm in, yeah. the, I'm in Warsaw Airport, just on my ones, waiting for this flight, thinking, how are you going to play this this next this next game of life, Daniel? Because make your next move your best move because it's going to have an impact on so many different people. Um, and I think that was a key turning point on how I conducted myself moving forward with everything that I've gathered, the way that I've taken on information and things like that, how I was going to have relationships. Like if this was going to be the end, what was left? 
Um, and I was just like, I was just in focus mode, basically. It was like game time. I'm in the fourth quarter. I'm Michael Jordan. Let's just do it. Like, get to the hospital. Whatever tests need to be done, do it. And then I'm in the hospital and I'm looking around, bro, and it's just like, everyone's ill. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm, t and then I'm also going, this happens every day. Like, I'm not alone. So, so why should I believe I am? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so, it's so, it's giving me goosebumps, man. It's but, so easy to feel that. Well, because I was like, it was bearing in mind before that it's why me, why me? Like, that was the mentality. Yeah. And then it was like, that happened and it was a serious wake up call to go, yo, I'm 20 years old, I've got cancer, but I haven't discovered cancer. Like, this happens every single yeah. day. Like, people deal with this. People deal with not just cancer, all sorts, bro. Like, whatever I've gone through in my life, people go through 10 times worse. Like, with due respect, I'm not special. Mm. Yeah, I, I believe in myself I'm special, but like, I'm not special in that sense where yeah. I'm not alone, I'm not targeted, the world isn't against me. It's just one of those things. Yeah, yeah but to program your mind at that age with that, to think that way yeah. is a blessing because that will actually... now. I don't even know if people watching this believe in higher powers and stuff, mm. but you're manifesting a better outcome there because you're not yeah. dwelling on it. You're not, oh, I'm going to, if the worst thing's going to happen, you're yeah. like, all right, now what's the next step? It's, yeah. it's a higher vibration and frequency that you're putting out. It, it definitely played, played a big part in, like I said, the, the, the switch. It was definitely the biggest switch turning point because I, I knew where I was always going, why me, da, 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 why me, I'm leaving, why me, da, da, da. and then bad was happening. And then I felt targeted. I felt like, and then it was to the point where, again, I went through a big high, then it was massive low. Big high, massive low. The biggest high ever, and then the biggest low ever. And it was just like... When's it going to end? When, that's, that's what I thought I was going to have. Like, it's, it's going to be... A, but I had to switch. Mm. I had to change it. Because if I probably said that... If I had that mentality, I'd probably be dead. Yeah. <laughs> like... Do you know what I mean? be told, like yeah. as blunt as it is because it I be, like the the power of the brain and like you, know, you can make yourself ill and you're not ill like that placebo effect 100%. do you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. all those small small, small little things <clears throat> so I knew I had to change that first day in the hospital I just knew I looked around and I said Dan you're not special this is every day these people these people do this every single day people go through this every single day like but respect what's being done. Like, appreciate what's being done. Like, take care into those people that are saving lives and the, the conversations I'm having with people and, yo, how, are you okay? I'm great, but how's that person over there? Yeah. You know, like, all these small things I picked up on this this mad little journey. And um, so, falling on, get my tests. Um, we don't know what cancer it is either. Um, we just know that my, my markers are just crazy. Um the abdominal pain is still there. Um, come Christmas, I remember the gland in my neck had like swollen to like the size of a cricket ball. So we're like, right, we're going to have to do a biopsy on it. When I think I was booked in for it, completely went. So it was like, it, everything kept fluctuating. It was stressful. So we're like, listen, we're going to have to do the, st the stomach surgery and just do the biopsy there. Um, so I think just prior to that, I had a biopsy on my groin and it came back negative. So this it was just really unusual um i think i was getting tested a lot for lymphoma hodgkinson's because that's what they thought i had but everything was coming back sort of negative as like the main source so when time went on did the stomach surgery um traced it straight back to testicular cancer so i'm like what do you mean <laughs> like yeah you've got testicular cancer so i'm like no i don't <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good, like, I'm fine, yeah, like, yeah. there's no pain, there's no swelling, there's nothing. And I never forget, right, as a, when they'd said, you do, we need to find out where. So I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you don't. But I was like, no, we do. So I had a feel around and that, again, I'm not feeling nothing. Absolutely nothing. Another doctor comes in, has a little feel, nothing. And I'm like, all right, guys, slow down a bit, like... I mean, like, I'm telling you, I, I don't. So I don't know why you think I do. And I'm, I'll never forget, yeah, one of them, I, like the, the, the sensation, yeah, he literally, it was like the smallest touch, yeah. And it felt like he flipped me so oh. hard, bro. And I was like, 
on God, whatever you just did then, don't do it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then he told the other <laughs> doctor, this is all in Cypriot as well, by the way. So he told the other guy, <laughs> he's then done it again. I'm like, bro, stop. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, please, it hurts. And he's like, right, we've got it. And fair play to them, right? Bro, the service that I had out there was fantastic. Yeah. Um, straight in for the surgery, had it removed. Um, then the following week, I was in for 12 weeks of intensive chemo. Um, what I didn't know is what stage I was at. So obviously this is, if you calculate from when the pain kicked in, that's November to the first, to basically the first week in February is when I had my, my treatment. I went to stage three. So it spread to my lungs. Um, by that time I had trouble breathing and like I was just fatigued and things like that. And I remember my first week of chemo, bro, I felt amazing. Like, sounds crazy, but- Yeah, that's mad. I could breathe again. Yeah. My back pain was gone. Like I thought, wow, this isn't that bad, obviously. <laughs> Nothing's kicked in properly yet, yeah. but like, um, yeah, the chemo, first week of chemo, just calm, bro. I was like, oh, this is easy. And I think as well, because it felt easy, my mindset was like, I can do this. Like it is, it's, it's going to be a walk apart. And obviously I'm young, I'm fit. Everybody's, journey's different yeah. you know but like the the seriousness of it is that it's no joke like your body does take a battering and by the end of the 12 weeks fucked like you, people saw me and i think when i think on my my 21st birthday a couple of my boys flew out to cyprus to surprise me because obviously i'm i'm in hospital my hair's gone, eyebrows gone. Um, so did people back home know about it? So I, I tried to keep it very quiet. Um, I only told a, a very select few people um, just because, again, I knew the impact on what it would do. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't want this, like, sort of, like... Phone constantly going. Not even, I just didn't want this, like, pe like pity thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I just didn't want that sort of attention. So, I, like I said, I was glad that I was in Cyprus. I was away from everyone. It was just me and my mum. I told a select few, and then, obviously, word sort of got out. Um, and I sort of came off socials at the time it was like Facebook um, and that just because I didn't know enough and I didn't want to put out the wrong message but also my mentality with it was very blase so like it was I've just got to just deal with it it's just one of those things I've got to deal with um, and I don't want to sort of shoot it down because obviously it's a serious thing but like mentally that was that's what I had to do to just yeah. channel myself to go through it um, I had to, the best way to say it, I treated it like a cold. Yeah, like yeah. it was just one of those things. Again, it's every day because it is in society. Um, they can do what they're going to do. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's as simple as that. And that's, that's sort of where I had to go with it. Um, but more time, I can't be upset. I can't be sad. In all honesty, bro, I was devastated. Yeah. Absolutely fucking devastated. Yeah. Like I remember the day it actually got confirmed. And um, it's when I had the biopsy on the groin. They said it wasn't, this is before we knew it was like solidified cancer, but not which one. Um, had the surgery, woke up. Um, and like, my mum was a state, they told her. Boom, told me. And I just remember, cool, straight face, straight face, straight face. Went home. She was like, do you want anything? Did I just go to the shop quick? I was like, no, no, I'm sweet. Bless. Boom. She went out. But when I heard that door closed, all come out. Fam, I cried my fucking eyes out. Yeah, cried my fucking eyes out like you wouldn't believe. And I just thought, it's happened again. Like, it's, it really happened again. And then it was a case of, she can't hold the car, come back, vaunt, like, clean up and straight, bro. Bro like, face. Yeah, like, mm. and like I said, that, that was it because I knew I couldn't be, not weak, but like, I, I didn't want to show that up to anyone. Yeah, like, yeah. I just didn't. And I don't anyway. Like, I don't. Anyway, bro, if, I, if I'm going to be upset, I do it. I yeah. know what to do to get myself in that zone. Um, I don't want to portray that energy onto other people around me um, just because it's, it's not fair. It's not, it's not for you to take personally. Like I said, we all go through things. Um, and I said, this is just me personally. We all go through things, but I know how to adjust yeah. and, 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 and carry that moving forward. Um, so, like I said, I had to be strong and things like that on what it would do for, again, for my mum. Because again... I knew what she had been through. Like I knew how devastating it was because there was a success story to my grandma and then it came back with a yeah. vengeance. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't want that to happen again. I had to make sure that she was straight. So having treatment, had my birthday, boys are flowing out. Um, 
And then it was a case of, right, what am I going to do here? Because I'm just at home. Yeah, I'm, I'm weak as fuck. Hair's gone, eyebrows gone. And I remember, like I said, chat out to Ben because he was like, like, what are you saying? And I, I was like, well, obviously, you know my situation, blah, blah. He goes, well, you're coming back to work. <laughs> right. And I think this is empowerment to the, the, the people of 2012. And like I said, that whole, everybody I met during that interaction and because the cancel was, wasn't a thing. It was in the background. It was like, yo, you're still coming to work, bro. Like, yeah. you're still going to have one of the best summers of your life again. Like, keep that same energy. And uh, I was just like, I don't feel like a victim. I don't feel different. I feel blah, blah, like nothing's changed. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Like nothing's changed. Um, and bro, I went and worked on the strip again. These times, I mean, I'm having chemo every other week. Like I said, I'm weak as hell, but I'm back on the strip. Like, and it's crazy to think that I was doing that. You know, like I'm surrounded by alcohol and drunks. Obviously, I can't drink or anything, but like it didn't bother me because I was I was in this world of what I had the year before where everything yeah. felt so heightened. It was yeah. amazing. Great people. Everyone's out there for positive, positive stuff. There's no problems. Um, it's a family unit. And more importantly, it was how those people were treating me. So like it felt all the things back home was like, like obviously everyone sends well and hope you're doing well and things like that. I didn't get that in Cyprus. We don't care about it. Like that's not the priority. Like you're a, you're a guy with a foxtail. What the hell? Like <laughs> no, yeah, tail. I used to wear a foxtail when I was, <laughs> when, I was when I was younger. Uh, used to a little keychain thing, but it was all sentimental stuff. Yeah, and like it's those those memories, bro. Like just power, like paramount to me getting through that that time. And I remember the day of um, when I got the clear and things like that, and like the celebration amongst everyone, and it just felt like unbelievable like like it felt like a win for a lot of people um but still had to remember i'm not special yeah, like yeah. there are still people like so when i was in a hospital at the time there was a i was in a, um, a room with a policeman who had like severe lung cancer and things like that and like i'd want to know how he was doing and yes. like all these small things so it's like you still have to like as, as great as what it is still humble it because the reality is so, it, 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 someone's in your position exactly it yeah. still carries on bro. so face value to people you're out of the blocks but you've built up this life outside of the strip at Nine Apple yeah. and you've still got you'll be going to sleep shutting your eyes the faces of someone that was in a bed next to you exactly. and seeing their family and then obviously you've got the how your mum's feeling because to mm. other people it's like oh you're through cancer but to your nan it came back that's it so that's you've it. still got them fears that's it so it's like you still have to, well, I say used to, I'm talking from my perspective, like had to still humble myself, like, and still just bring it, rein it in the course because it's not over. Like life is still going. Like I still have to understand, like, just because you, you may have got this one win, there could be an L around the corner. You yeah. don't know in it. So like appreciate what you have now. Like, and you're you're, not, you're only, you're technically going through your life used to happiness, setback. Yeah. Happiness, Bigger setback, exactly. happiness, and an even bigger setback. So to you, you ain't um, out the block. Yeah, exactly. I already know that so possibly it, something's gonna come around the corner. You programmed your mind yeah. subconsciously to just be humble. But and also in the back of my mind, I know that information, but I'm still trying to like, yeah. like I said, hum the keyword is humble it because I don't want to put myself in that negative. But it's just that friendly reminder that yeah, okay, yeah, 100%. don't lose your head. Yeah, like, yeah. understand the situation. Um, and like I said, cherished it. And I'd like, I, I, I want to give flowers on this thing today because like I said, that 2012 year, those that know, bro, I, I cannot put into words what I owe everybody during that year. Like, par like it's why I'm still standing, yeah. period. It's what got me through it mentally. Like, and it wasn't a case of I've got this issue, I need help type thing. It was just unwritten. I didn't need to address it. The energy was just unspoken. So, um, and I said, they're relationships that, again, 10 years later. Yeah, massive shout out to the boys. You know who you are. Yeah, exactly. So like, those, those, those people, all those people, like, I, like I said, I can't put into words where, what, what they did, well, it's like, it's a debt that I cannot repay, bro. Yeah. So like, most importantly, if there's anything, setbacks, blah, 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 it's the time that I can give back to those people that I will drop everything for. And you've got my time. Yeah. Like, because... 
I, I, you gave that without even knowing it was given to me unasked so um, yeah like I said and then like I uh, said got the all clear thankfully um, remission all that sort of thing still had to have regular checks and that out there um, and then it was just sort of the aftermath and like dealing with it and sort of any any the, I don't want to say paranoia, but like any sort of niggle or something that might come through, you do get paranoid, bro. And it's just like, is this that second coming? Like where, mm. oh, okay, the second wind of it now, because I've, I've seen it. I've seen what it does. Obviously, my percentages are slightly higher than the average now because it it, it, it was the, um, they weren't taken out of me. They just obviously shrunk. Yeah. Um, so it's like that can just activate at any point. Like you now not say live your life in fear, but you always have that in the back of your mind. Um, but it's not about taking that, like thinking that's what's going to happen. It's just knowing it's there, but more time, it's life. Yeah, It is just life. And again, I, I think where I, let's say I go before where it's it's just part of the game. Like it just is one of those things. And I can, like I say, I can be stuck going back and thinking, oh, that's this, 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 this. And as the world's turning, bro, if I'm if I'm still in that same place, I'll get left behind. Yeah, you like, ain't got nowhere. Yeah, with that mentality. <clears throat> so I had to just, you know, whatever's in front of me, that's that's what I'm dealing with at the Sick, moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so like, again, partly why I wanted to do this sort of podcast thing with you was because, again, it's sort of a 10-year anniversary thing, but more time, I think the mentality I had in the build-up to it as well, where, again, very didn't really care brush it to the side type thing where you'll get yourself checked no matter who you are like if you feel something or something feels off you everyone knows their body and that sort of thing but just it, it doesn't hurt to check like the, the fear of finding out something could save your life yeah that's just we, the reality. we re reiterate that every time we touch on any mental health or anything so in the description i will put any sort of helplines or numbers that you can reach out to um, and please if there's anything that does seem a little bit unfamiliar go and get yourself checked yeah man for sure because like I said life is too short we've been in situations where we've seen life come and go like I said we've all been through things um, personal relations etc and it's it's just knowing about listen you have you have one life like in, please enjoy it do you know what I mean enjoy it man because it, it can be too short at the best of times um, and then yeah so I think as well where I tie in like with that situation with my career now so then I would ask myself what's like what what what's next moving forward and I think why like so with my career and tattooing and things like that I um I remember the following year um there was a death out in Napa what some tourist um and their group of friends had come into the studio and wanted the date, that specific date. Um, they were all like normal, weren't really upset or anything, but they just wanted that date, that name and date. And I was like, if you don't mind me asking, like during the first tattoo, like who, who's the fix obviously today? I was like, was, was it back home? And he was like, nah, we was all out last night and you just didn't wake up this morning. And I was like, sorry. He goes, bro, we was all drinking literally six hours ago and he didn't wake up this morning. And I was like, what do you mean? And like, but it hit me like a truck, yeah? And I was like, like I don't even know what to say. Like, I, I, like, I'm, so, like I'm so sorry. Like, like, what I was doing didn't feel important because mm. of this situation. And then I flipped it and I was going, I'm doing something for these lads now where that's going to last a lifetime, yeah? And it, it, it doesn't mean anything to me personally. And obviously the respect is there, but like for them, it's everything, yeah. you know? And like, it's a memory that they're going to share and they're, they're put, flipping a positive on such a horrendous negative. Um, and like I said, it hit me like a truck. And I was like, again, my perspective then changed. Like what I'm doing for people can last a lifetime. Yeah. Not just mine. So if I did get my second wind or blah, 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 something came through, what would be left of me? Like, what would be... A legacy. Yeah. Like, and then that's how I started looking at life now. You know, Powerful like... How that is. So it was like, prior to that, if I went, what have I done, bro? Because I, I felt like I didn't achieve anything or yeah. leave anything behind or at least leave a lasting impact. Um, 
again, so moving forward, it was how I treated people, that that humbleness, the respect first, um, appreciating the time that I have with people. Um, again, if someone wants a piece or whatever, what I can do for them. And it, again, my door could come, that door could come knocking and it's done for me, cool, but I'm so content. Yeah. Like, I'm very content. Like, and I'm not saying I'm trying to, like, manifest that now, but... Uh, bro, I'm at peace. Like, I'm not scared or anything like that. So, because I know I've built um, fantastic relationships. I've met, I've traveled the world. I've met fantastic people. Um, and something can be left behind where people can go, yeah, oh, I cool. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan yeah. did that, blah, blah. So, You'd know that even in Napa if you saw someone yeah. with a decent tattoo. Yeah. You'd be like, <laughs> Dan, Danny's yeah. done that, Swag's so done like, that. And like I said, it's, it's, it's nice to obviously get that appreciation and things like that. But Tattoos like George's tree. There you go, George's tree. It's done on Jason exactly. and the boys. Yeah. The boys. So like, it's it's those small things, bro, that that go a long way for me personally, and that's why I, I act the way I do. And yeah. like, it's sentimental things. Like this chain around my neck, bro. I've had it I'd, since. Yeah, that, this is twenty a famous, minutes. Twenty minutes ago, yeah, I was chain. looking at that and the watch, and I was thinking, I've that, seen that necklace nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this necklace doesn't come off my no, neck, bro. Good, I like that. It's one of them things like the memories it holds. That's my most prized possession. Mm. I've still got a bloody Napa band on my leg, bro. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you, like, if I, can, if I can get it out, like. And this is all shout out Mark Dacey, but I am still wearing. <laughs> For fuck's I'm sake. still wearing the 2012 Napa band on my leg. Ten years, Dan. Bro, like, and like I said, it's it's a, it's a sentimental thing where. I can't repay it, bro. But like, yeah. that's the memory I have. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I told myself this year I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off and I will get it tattooed because <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The band. I mean, fair play. That's obviously good, good quality. So shout yeah. out, shout out the boys on, <laughs> on, on selling them ones. But um, yeah, them small sentimental, sentimental things like like they're so powerful. Yeah, unbelievable. And that's what drew, that's what drove me, man. That's what created me. Um, it was turning, like I said, hostile situations. How can I better myself with that information on board, move forward with it? If it happens to someone else, I can maybe relate or it's just a perspective to say, oh, this is an angle, maybe do this. Because it's not, I'm not right, but it's just what I know. Yeah, what, uh, works, it, what works for you. Yeah, and it's just got me through it. Like, it's as simple as that. But some people can relate to that. Some people can't and you have to different avenues, but it's just an option. Um, and I always say that when talking to people, like I love communicating, bro. Like I heard a thing about obviously information in this world is is free like we have access to it all the time yeah and some people choose not to i choose to and like i learn from it i love interactions people's stories um where like even this podcast bro listening to them like people's journeys and like i said before like i come on here and like i don't really have the trope like aside the cancer obviously but like what people have really gone through and things like that i don't have that but it's nice to know that people can relate yeah. and, and still push through, you know, and especially, um, I want to give you your flowers, bro, right? because <laughs> like I said, I've, I've seen the, the, the downfall and like I said, when we was in Ibiza and them, them episodes and etc. like how you can turn yourself around and uh, push other people to do so as well. And like, there's, that, that's fantastic. Like it's, it really, you really deserve the credit that you deserve, man. So, no, I appreciate shout, that, shout out to you on that as well, give me, bro. Get me too, but no, that means that means the world. So, that is, yeah, I think like, yeah, I think our first time I cried in front of the boys, and that was that time in Ibiza. Yeah. And I just, my head was just gone. Same as in Napa. You've been at some proper turning points of where my darkest days have been. Mm. And you've always just been that nice, calm voice. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. bro, if you ever need anything. Same as Ben, shout out, Ben. You've been there exactly the same, man. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm really grateful for them comments, man. It means a world. No, man, of course. Like I said, it, it, it goes a long way. Like, it's testament to, again, the appreciation of what. I went through, like I said, I don't, I don't speak too tough on it. Like I said, I keep my cars close to my chest. Yeah. It's a lot for me to touch base on certain <clears throat> things in my life and things like that that people don't know about. Um, but it, it just puts everything, in, everything into context on how I conduct myself and moving forward, and the relationships I have and why they are so strong, you know. Um, and I'm thankful for that. I really, I really, really am thankful for those interactions. I'm glad that if I don't see you for however long. Bro, we can pick up the phone, and it's like we were just with each other yeah, like it's yesterday, nothing. It's like, like, like nothing. Well, I dropped you a message. I thought we hadn't spoken for a while, but that's true friendships. So yeah. I don't have to talk to people all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it was like we never met, we literally never left. It was yeah, just bro. like, what's going on? Exactly. Like, <laughs> it, that's literally how it feels. And it's so organic as well. Yeah. Like, and, I, and like I say, I, I'm thankful for that. I'm glad that I have that with so many people. Um, because, and it's not like a boasting, oh yeah, cool. I'm like, mm. nah, forget all that. It's, egos are gone, bro. Like, yeah. it's, it's love first. Like, it's love and respect first. And the time that, like I said, the time that I was given, I'll give back 100%. So, um, yeah, like... That is so important because it, it, it definitely is a way of just, like, I know it's such a cliche saying, like, treat others how you expect to be treated. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But you haven't, from such a young age, I don't even think you've really had anything in your life to build up an ego. Well, like yeah. you've just held your own and you as you were talking in the car on the way here like you, you just learn from everything but it's so hard to not act on emotions yeah, and, yeah. and learn on everything yeah. it's the hardest to ha you can act you can move is. relationships and jobs acting on emotions but if you can take a step back yeah. and go well, why is this happening for me it's not happening to me it's happening yeah. for me like what and there is no room for ego on that. I, th I think as well like like I said I, I'm quite the I'm not say I'm special, but like, and normally in terms of like, I can take myself out of a situation um, and see it in the third person. So like, if I'm having an, an argument with someone or rah, rah, like, and I'm strong in my opinion, I do have to just take myself out of that for a second because someone else has an output. There must be a reason for that, you know? So I need mm. to understand that. And once I do, bro, there, there are three sides to every story yeah. or in anything. Um, it's all about one side, the other, and the truth. And how often do you get to the truth? Who knows? But if you imagine a pyramid or a triangle, meet somewhere in the middle yeah. of it and like, it will be calm. Like, <clears throat> it's, it's under, like, so I've, I've learned this over the years with friendships and relationships. Like, if someone loses their shit at one small thing, mm. that's not just one small thing. Yeah. That's a trigger yeah, a that has dog. been, that could be 10 clusters yeah. of things that have happened over the year. Like I have it, I've lost my rag. There'll be certain things and it's like, but that's a trigger. Yeah. Like, that is why, like, that, that's why it's so important to understand, like, everyone is a certain way because they've been through shit. Exactly. You're not just born that's a certain, it. like, that's dickhead. You're, everyone <laughs> yeah. is a certain way. That's it. Because of what they've been through. That's it. And I, that's why I go back to that terminology, like, I'm not special. But, like, not a sense of, again, egos or things like that. Like, every day people are going through shit, man. Like... Like we are, there, there are what eight billion people on this planet. There's, there's no reason to think you're alone. Yeah. At all, at all in any situation. So, like I said, with the whole cancer thing, I knew I wasn't alone. Um, it was obvious, and like I said, with that, I had to channel that energy to be strong for people around me. Um, and still, like I said, yeah, I got the win, but there are still people going through it every day, every second, bro. Like someone's just broken news today. Yeah. Like, and they think their world's over. Um, and I think it's testament to, to know that it's okay. It is okay. Um, don't manifest the worst. Like, because again, I felt like I did that to a point and then I had to switch. Yeah. And when I did, bro, like life, life as bad as what it was, life was fant like better than ever, you know? Uh, and moving forward, like I said, that's tried to keep that same, same process to, to, structure my life you know what I mean so fucking inspiring so yeah so inspiring yeah. I was just going to ask if there's anyone any advice to anyone that's either going through cancer at the moment or loved ones around them have you any advice but I think you've just summed it up yeah Perfectly. like I said it's, 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 it's a mental game of course it is um, that's why and like you would look, go to the doctor of your body like look after your mind look after your mind man because it's so powerful people underestimate the power of the mind like and what it does our thoughts can make us unwell and yeah. people don't understand this, yeah, like, if, even little things like, if you break a promise to yourself, you're going to go to the gym or something. Every mm. time you're doing that, you're battering down your self-esteem and your self-worth yeah. subconsciously, you don't even know it. So if our thoughts can make us unwell with mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, you know, anything like that, then looking at life a different way and raising your vibration, our thoughts can make us well. 100%. And I, I don't 100%. disbelieve that you haven't manifested coming out of cancer. Yeah because of the way that you acted to it. You weren't yeah. in self-pity. You were fucking on the strip and lying up and throwing flyers. While I'm working at Pirates, yeah, no, do you know no. what I mean? So yeah. that no, just, it's true. that's just like juice to you, bro. Like that is, I have guests come on here and they've been through some shit, but that is next level stuff because the end is in sight. That's it. The bottom line, there's no, there's no like positive way to look at this cancer. Yeah. You're like, so to be sat here today and obviously going through life, there is, a lot more shit that's been thrown at you and you're still sat here today but going through that now is just giving you an unbelievably beautiful way of looking at life and yeah 100%, yeah. 100% man like I said I'm so grateful I'm grateful for it um, 
I still, like I said, I still keep myself to myself and blah, 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 <laughs> but like again, every interaction, like meeting ev- like meeting everyone today, like yeah. it's 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 yo appreciation, man. Like I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm here to meet you. Yeah, hundred you know I mean? percent. So, um, like I said, for other people going through whatever it is, like I said, get checked or work, like work on yourself, but you're never alone. There's no such thing as being alone in this world. There's too many people in this world yeah, to be alone. Let's be real. Um, and if you have that mindset of you're you're alone, switch it up. yeah, switch it. So it doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt to switch. You it's know? not hard. You have the no. choice to do it. You have the choice to think you're alone. You, you have the choice to believe you've got a thousand people <laughs> exactly, around you. Exactly. Exactly. And they'll soon come flooding. So yeah. Dan, I ask all my guests at the end of every podcast. Right. Merely or means for the pursuit of the better in life. How do you plan on pursuing the better in life moving forward? Um, I think I did think about this, uh, but I, I think uh, in terms of like I said, the same same sort of concept of like I said, it's relationships, etc., um, mindset. Um, but I, I want to. I don't know. I want to. I just want to be able to still do what I'm doing, but really make it have an impact so like I said wow I've done this today like I've, I've hit 31 years old now and I said prior to this I've not really spoken about it but if this this conversation does one thing then I've, I've done the right thing do you know what I mean so like just want to touch let's say touch base on making sure let's say everyone around me is straight yeah making sure those people and everyone around them is straight and those people and so and keeping that domino effect you know because like I said life is too short man enjoy it enjoy it as best as you really really yeah, can man, like because you, you you don't know like but if you live in fear of it you will manifest that sort of the outcome yeah so manifest that good energy man <laughs> that's it tight. nothing left nothing left Dan you are nothing short of an inspiration you've been a mate of mine for 10 years you've looked after me fucking Financially, when I've been skinny, you've took me to Ibiza with Ben. Um, in Napa, my mental health, you've been there. You've seen some of my darkest times. And I'm honestly so grateful that you've agreed to come on and share your story and sit down here yeah, and tell man. it first, man, because I know 100% it's going to inspire so many people. And I'm just overwhelmed with the facts of what no, I've just I, listened I, I to, man. It, man. So I massively, massively appreciate okay. it, brother. Okay, I appreciate it, brother. Here's to another 40 years of friendship. Of course, man. <laughs> of course. Don't start drink up. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, so yeah, massively grateful, man. Thank you for watching. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. Merely a fucking movement, baby. <laughs> baby. Merely a movement, baby.